Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up WinCC user archives control and I'm actually going to be explaining it to Mary. Hi guys, I'm Mary. Just getting a little bit interested into computers so I have Zach here going to explain to me what WinCC is. Uh, just so the viewers know, how much experience do you have with industrial automation, WinCC, anything like that? None. Okay, good. So we're going to be explaining to someone with little to no experience so that way you guys can get uh, user archives up and running in your own project. So, um, Mary, basically what, what WinCC user archives is, it gives you that visualization and interface layer to save data to and from a database. Okay. So applications would include like a recipe manager, production log, and so I've actually set up a demo showing how we would, how we would do something like that. Okay. Okay, we're in the WinCC Explorer. And this is our user archive demo project. We're going to actually want to go to computer and right click, open up the properties and hit properties again. Uh, there's a startup tab. We're going to want to make sure that's enabled. So once we have that enabled, um, we're going to we're going to go down to user archive and open that up. And here we have the configuration studio. This is the name of the table, the user archive. And these are basically some configuration parameters for the, the user archive. One of the key ones is communication type. By default, it's set to none. We're going to want to use data manager tags, and that enables us to hook up the fields in the database to our tags in WinCC. And then over as we scroll to the right here, uh, we have these four uh, control tags, ID, job, field, and value. So these are pretty important. The ID is basically what, what you're telling the database what row you want to, to edit or modify. So if you have 10 rows in the database and you want to get the values from the fifth row, you're going to use ID 5. ID is automatically attached to each row that you add into the database and um, it's the primary key. So Does it have to be 5? No, it can be whatever row you want to access. Um, the job is, is, what, is what function you want, you want it to run. So if you have a job number six, it'll execute a write. Seven is a read, so to read the values out of the user archive. Where do you put this information in? Um, you would put this, you would write this into the tag either via button script. So, and that's, that's viewed from this archive main root view. When we actually select the, the archive table down here, we actually see the fields. So these are some user-defined fields that I've created, lot number, part number, and here's where you configure the tag connection. But yeah, but that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it for configuring the actual user archive. So once we get to this point, you'll actually see on the archive data tab down here, we can actually start storing records. So this is that ID column that we were talking about. Okay. So if I wanted to add in a new lot, like let's say I want um, a new, new order comes in and it's lot 200 and we need to produce part number 5 and the operator is Mary and we need 100 units. It just stored, stored that record into the database for us. For the ID number, can you do any number? Like you have it on there as like 1, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. Can you do like just sequential order? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? It's, it's going to be sequential order. Okay. So the reason why they're out of order right now is if you try to insert a record into it and it doesn't doesn't take or you delete it, it's going to automatically increment to the next number. So if I were to do the next one, it would automatically be 12. Oh, okay. So this is this this field is taken care of for us. Just know that we have access to it. It's in the database and that's how we associate actions on that record. Really where it gets complicated is with the job and an ID number. And that's, that's once you understand that, then you can really do anything with the user archives. The field and value is, is another thing that we'll talk about, but basically you can type in a field name and a value, and you can do a reverse lookup. And then we can go ahead and modify the user archive from within the runtime. But to do that, we'll need to create a screen. So go ahead and open your graphics designer and I've already created a little basic screen here and on the screen you'll see that we have the user archive control component 
Um, double click it to open it up select your user archive from here there's a ton of properties you can modify and all those properties are actually reflected in the object property browser so you can access all those via VBS script or C script it's a ton of stuff to play with um, but the main thing I want to show here is how you can use those control tags to modify um, the user archive values from within the runtime so here you'll see that I created uh, a bunch of IO fields and I linked the internal tags uh, to those fields um, you'll want to make sure that the data format is formatted properly and again um, the ID field should be a signed value so here you'll see if the output format is formatted with an S in front of the number you'll see the little plus or minus and um, because we're going to need to enter in negative values in that num uh, ID field. So if you're using an unsigned 32-bit integer, it's not going to work. I uh, ran into that problem before, so just a heads up. Yeah, and um, just make sure that you link all these fields. You know, you can copy and paste. And a little quick tip is you can drag, drag the tag directly onto the I.O. field to create it. And once you get them all linked up, then you're you know good to go. So you'll want to go ahead and hit play to open the runtime and here you'll see we have the user archive component and the field so go ahead and enter some values in and you, to insert a record you want to hit ID negative one and job number six so job six is always going to be taking the values in the tags and putting them into the user archive and minus one ID is creating a new record to read a record from the user archive select the record ID that you wish to read and job number seven to read it. Job seven is always going to be reading from the user archive into your internal or external tags. And again you can read the first record in the user archive with an ID of negative six or you can read the last record in the user archive with ID negative nine and seven to read and you see the values coming in and out of the user archive if you want to delete a record in the user archive select the record ID that you want to delete and hit job number eight and it's going to remove the record for you if you want to update a record in the user archive select the record ID that you wish to update you want to modify the values in your tags so whatever those tags are at that moment, um, you know you can manipulate them. The PLC could change the values for you, and once job goes to number six, it's gonna overwrite those values for user archive ID number ten. You can search for an ID if you're not sure what the ID is. You can enter in a field name and a value to search for. Here I'm searching for operator name YouTube you'll want to set the ID to 0 and the job to 7 and it's going to read those values in for you so you can find that record and here's another example you know again you can search for any field and any value and it's going to read that value in for you um, from within the user archive table some of the cool things you can do is export your data in the toolbar select filter dialog to sort by the columns or a selection dialog will allow you to filter the data here you see the selection dialog enter an operation a value and again this is kinda similar to excel filter so your engineers are going to be kinda used to this thanks for watching do you think I did a better job explaining it to you than I did in my first video? Yeah. I think it's because I'm actually sitting here doing it too. Like, like watching you do it at the same time. And I think with the older video, it was... It was almost like you were explaining it and then doing it, and it just didn't... It didn't, like... Yeah. It didn't flow very well. Yeah, I definitely think explaining it as I'm... Should, like doing it as I'm explaining it is a lot better than doing it and then explaining it as a voiceover because is it easier for you? Oh yeah. 
the only thing is I think it it chews up more time but I'll just have to be more creative with the editing but I mean we're probably at 20 minutes edit me out of it just edit me out of it okay because then uh, you then you have all the questions answered and you have the basics explained yeah okay and that's it guys thanks for watching thank you